Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. So here we're going to be using the Chinese remainder theorem to find the number x. And we can see that x has a remainder of 3 when we divide it by 5, a remainder of 1 when we divide it by 7, and a remainder of 6 when we divide it by 8. The Chinese remainder theorem only works in this case because each pair of moduli are relatively prime. That means that there are no common factors between them. So if, for example, we look at 5 and 7, they don't have a common factor. Their highest common factor is 1. Right, so I think the best way to start this would be to look at the general case first of all, and then have a look at how it works in this particular example. So let's write this down as a general problem first. So let's have x is congruent to b1 mod n1, x is congruent to b2 mod n2, and x is congruent to b3 mod n3. And then we'll write out a table where we first of all put the uh, the remainders, so those are our b's, and then we will have, now notice I'm using a capital letter N here, so the NI, um, let's just explain what that is, so capital letter N is going to be the new modulus that we'll be working for, for our new number, our number X, and that's the product of all the moduli that are involved here, so the product of n1, n2 and n3. And when we work out our ni, that's going to be that product divided by lowercase ni. So it'll be clear when we actually come to, um, to write down what, what each value is. And then the next column we'll be looking at xi and that's really the inverse of the previous number in, in the relevant um, modulus. And the last column will be the product of all of those three things. So let's just write that down as bi, ni and xi. And then all we need to do to find the number x that we're looking for will be to add those numbers together. So let's just put in the table the relevant um, values. So we'll have b1, b2, b3. And let's just explain what each of these n's is equal to. So n1 is n divided by little n1, so that's just going to be n2, n3. So it's the product of the moduli that are not associated with the first one, and so on. So n2 is the product of the other two, so n1 and n3, and n3 is n1 and n2. And then here we just have x1, x2, and x3. And we simply multiply all of those together. So all of those are straightforward. And then that last column is going to give us, when we add it all together, the x that we want. So x, the value that we're trying to find, is the sum of, we're going from i is 1 to 3, aren't we? And that's the sum of bi, ni, xi. So we're just adding that last column together. And that's going to be mod, and it's the product of the three initial moduli there. So let's just move this so that we give ourselves some space to do the actual example with numbers in. So this is the summary of how things work in the general case. 
it will make a lot more sense once we actually apply it to our example. So let's write out this table for our actual example. So the first column is going to consist of our remainders. Right, so our first column, our remainders, are simply 3, 1 and 6. And then the second column, so the simplest way of thinking about this is that we're multi multiplying together the moduli for the other two. So we're looking at the one that's got a remainder of three, that's got a modulus of five, so we're multiplying seven and eight together here. So seven times eight is 56. The next one, we're multiplying together five and eight, so that's 40. And the last one, we're multiplying together five and seven, so that's 35. You can, of course, work out what n is and divide by the modulus, relevant modulus, if you want. So to do that, instead of what we've just done, so we do need to know what um, our n is, that's 5 times 7 times 8. So that's going to be 280. So the other way of working out these numbers for this column, so the first one would be 280 divided by 5. Next one will be 280 divided by 7 and the last one 280 divided by 8. So two ways of working those numbers out. And the next column involves us finding the inverse of the numbers that we've just found. So that's what these numbers are here. So that needs a bit of thinking about. So let's do some working for these. So what we want here is, first of all, we've got 56 and we want to know what its inverse is in mod 5. So what we're doing is we're saying 56 times x1 is congruent to 1 in mod 5. So what we can do now is say, well, actually, 56 can be simplified in mod 5. If we divide it by 5, we get a remainder of 1 because 5 11s are 55. So that gives us that x1 is congruent to 1 in mod 5. So that was fairly straightforward, finding the answer there. So x1 is 1. And then the next one. So the next one we're trying to find is x2. And that's got to be congruent to 1 if we're trying to find its inverse. So we're now looking at uh, mod 7. So modulus 7. So what is 40 equivalent to in mod 7? Well, 35 is a multiple of 7, so that means 40 minus 35 is 5. So 5 times whatever x2 is has got to be congruent to 1 in mod 7. And the simplest thing to do, really, is just to do this by, by trial and error. So we've got 5 times something has got to be congruent to 1 in mod 7. So if we try 1... 5 doesn't work, does it? 5 times 1 is 5, that's not congruent to 1. 5 times 2 is 10, 10 minus 7 is 3, so that's no good. When we put x equal to x2 equal to 3, we get 5 3 is a 15, and 15 is congruent to 1 in mod 7, so we found that x2 must be congruent to 3 in mod 7. So that number goes in our table for x2. And then the last one, we've got that 35 times whatever that value is must be congruent to 1 in mod 8. And 35, well, if we divide that by 8, we get a remainder of 3, don't we? So 3 times our x value has got to be congruent to 1 mod 8. And working through the values again if we try one three no that's not going to work three times two six no that's not going to work three threes 
that will work because 9 is congruent to 1 mod 8, isn't it? So x3 is going to be congruent to 3 mod 8. So that's the value that we want in our table. And then the product of all those things, so bi, ni and xi is now simple to work out. So 3 times 56 times 1, 168. 1 times 40 times 3 is 120. And 6 times 35 times 3 is 630. Right, so we don't need all this working out down below, so let's get rid of that. Before you go on to the next stage, you might just like to look at the numbers that we found and check that they do seem sensible numbers. So for example, when we look at the 168 and you divide that by 5, you can see the remainder is going to be 3. When you look at the 120 and you divide that by 7, the remainder is going to be 1, and the 630, when divided by 8, does give you a remainder of 6. So that's all looking good. So then the next stage is that we add all these three numbers together, and that will give us um, our value for x. So we're adding the numbers in the last column together, so let's just make that really obvious what we're doing here. And that's going to give us 918. So what we have found is that x is congruent to 918 and our n was 280, so it's mod 280. So now we just want to write that as the simplest, smallest positive number. So x is congruent to, we can take off about 3 lots of 280 I think, that will give us 78. And what we've actually done now is answer our question. So it's a good idea to check it. And you can see that 78 is congruent to 3 mod 5. It's congruent to 1 mod 7. And it's also congruent to 6 mod 8. And you might also like to um, use Maxima to check this answer. So to do that, all you need to do is key in Chinese, use round brackets, and then square brackets to list your remainders, and then a comma, and then another set of square brackets, and put in the moduli. And that's it.